Hey, this is Ben from Tech Lockdown, and today I want to show you a feature that got me to switch to an iPhone after about eight years of being an Android user. So to get started, I'm going to show you a demo of a device that already has supervised mode set up on it, and I'm going to customize some restrictions that clearly, uh, clearly showcase why you would want to use supervised mode. And this demo is taken from the perspective of an adult who is self-restricting, but a parent can follow along and basically replace the steps where I'm, I'm locking my own profile with just not doing that specific step. Here we have an iPhone that's running iOS 26, which is the latest version of the iPhone uh, when this video is recorded. You could do the same thing on iOS 18, and most likely future versions of the iPhone will have access to the exact same capabilities that I use in this video. So the first thing we're gonna focus on is limiting the apps that can be downloaded from the App Store and accessed on this device. And you can see on my test device here that I've downloaded a lot of social media and private messaging apps and some video streaming apps as well. So since I have supervised mode enabled on this device, I can add something called an Apple configuration profile to the settings on this device. And it will basically apply the restrictions that I've customized. So in this video, I'm going to use the tech lockdown config generator to customize these restrictions and easily add them to my device. So here I've loaded up the tech lockdown dashboard in Safari and I've, I've gone to the iOS config under the apps tab. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle on the only allow approved apps mode. I'm just going to select a few apps that I wanna make available on this device. And I'm even gonna include the app store here. The nice thing about this allow list approach is that you can safely unblock the app store because if an app isn't on this list, you won't even be able to download uh, an unapproved app from the app store. And if the app store is blocked completely, sometimes you won't be able to update an app so that it continues to function properly. You don't actually need to block access to the App Store if you want to prevent other apps from being downloaded. So I can safely include the App Store and I'm also going to include Safari since I want to be able to continue to customize this config which requires that the Safari browser exists on the device. Now I'm going to customize the list of apps that are allowed to exist on this device. To actually add these restrictions to my device, I'm going to hit the sync button and then download the configuration profile. And it's going to prompt me to allow the download. And then once I do that, there should be a message that pops up that says profile downloaded. Now you can switch over to the settings app on your iPhone and navigate to the VPN and device management section and you should see a downloaded profile. All you need to do is tap the profile that was downloaded and go through those install screens. When you're prompted, you'll have to enter the passcode to your iPhone. After the config is installed, you'll notice that the settings page now has this configuration profile section and the config that I just installed shows up there. Um, and at this point on the home screen, you'll see that there's only the app store because all those apps that were previously there are now blocked. And one of the only apps that I have available on the home screen is just the app store. So now I'm just gonna open up the App Store and search for Snapchat, which is one of the apps that was previously installed. And you'll see that on the App Store page, it says that I can open the app because it was previously installed. But now that I've blocked it, it's going to prevent me from actually using the app. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I actually want to allow myself to use Snapchat on this device, but I wanna pair it with an accountability app that monitors the Snapchat uh, snaps that I'm viewing in the spotlight feed and maybe the profiles that I'm viewing there as well. So I need to reduce the app restrictions by adding Snapchat to the allow list and also uh, a screen monitoring app as well. So I'm going to go back to the Tech Lockdown dashboard and add the Snapchat app to my app allow list. But you can probably imagine that if I'm able to easily do this, then it makes it really easy for me to get around app restrictions. So this is where the profile locking feature is really valuable, especially if you are an adult who's self-managing your own app restrictions. If you take a look at the top of the page, my profile is currently unlocked. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lock it so that if I wanna add more apps to this allow list, it's gonna require me to put in a little bit of effort or to get permission from an accountability partner. You can customize the steps required in order for you to unlock your tech lockdown profile. And you'll see here, there's a few options to choose from. Uh, the most basic one is just requiring yourself to enter in random text. And this can be as tedious as you want it to be. You could require that you enter in a thousand characters of random text before it lets you unlock your profile. And you can also require that you enter in a pin that's been emailed to your accountability partner. You add a little bit of checks and balances to your ability to unlock a profile because your accountability partner has to be involved. You could also just set a simple password, which is what I'm gonna do in this video just to illustrate a point. You'll also notice that I could specify an unlock delay in addition to these steps that I have to go through in order to unlock it. So I could, I could set a two hour time delay where after I enter the unlock passcode, it makes me wait two hours or even 24 hours before my profile actually unlocks. So now in order for me to add apps to my allow list, I need to unlock my tech lockdown profile. And then I'm gonna go down and customize that list of approved apps. Now I've approved Snapchat for use on this device, but I also wanna pair it with the screen monitoring app. And if you're familiar with screen monitoring apps, there's competitors like Covenant Eyes that take screenshots when you use Safari, but it can't take screenshots of Snapchat or other apps. I actually helped launch the Living Room app, and the reason I liked it so much was it could record all apps that you use on the device. So if you're an adult who's figured out how to access inappropriate content outside of Safari, it's like the perfect accountability app. And if you're a parent who really wants to monitor a kid's iPhone, you can actually see what your child is doing on their device because it's recording the full screen and it gets every app that's used. Before I sync these changes to my device, I'm going to toggle on another option because I wanna prevent the living room app from being deleted, which would completely bypass monitoring. All I have to do is toggle off allow deleting apps. And if you're familiar with screen time, you'll know that there's a similar setting that you can customize within screen time. The difference here is that I can't go into screen time settings and turn off this option that I've just enabled. It won't matter if I customize that setting because this config restriction takes priority over screen time. To add these new restrictions to my device, I'm gonna follow the same process that I did earlier and download this configuration profile, go into my settings, and now I'll see that there's two sections with a downloaded profile and then the current configuration profile. And I'm just gonna tap the downloaded profile again and go through those installation steps. What this does is it just updates the old restrictions that I had on the device with the new ones. So now I've made Snapchat available on this device, but the living room app is also installed and I can't delete it. So basically to use Snapchat, I'm gonna have to record my screen. This reduces a lot of the risks surrounding Snapchat since there's this accountability layer associated with it now. So now I wanna restrict access to what websites I can visit in Safari. I'm gonna go back to the config generator and go to the web section to start customizing some of those restrictions. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the automatic adult website filter. Now, if you're familiar with screen time, you know that there's also a screen time adult website filter, and this is basically that exact same thing. The only difference is that you can't go into screen time settings and override this by customizing that restriction there. The config restriction restriction takes priority over screen time. Another thing I want to do is I want to restrict access to certain pages within a website without blocking that entire website. In this example that I'm going to use, I want to access some parts of the Reddit website, but I don't want to have access to the news section within Reddit. So all I'm going to do is customize the website block list and I'm going to add the news URL so that that page specifically is restricted. So once these new restrictions are added to the device, uh, when I open up Safari and try to go to the news subsection of Reddit, you'll see that you get that standard um, screen time block message and I can't access the news page specifically. But if I try to go to the home page of Reddit, I can still access that because I didn't block that specific URL within my website block list. So Screen Time's adult website filter isn't perfect and some stuff gets through. I actually want to combine Screen Time's website blocking with DNS filtering, which is basically blocking websites at the network level of that device. 
And there are some services that are more comprehensive with their ability to identify adult websites and even give you more granularity over the types of inappropriate websites you want to block access to. You also might want to block other website categories. So for example, gambling websites or VPN and proxy websites that let you browse anonymously. And in this case, DNS filtering is much more versatile compared to something like screen time. I'm going to use Tech Lockdown's DNS content policy, and I'm just gonna add a rule for blocking adult websites. And this rule actually includes a little bit more than what you would get with screen time. It includes websites that might show like lingerie or things that aren't necessarily classified as adult content, but you might wanna restrict yourself from accessing. So now I want my iPhone to connect to this DNS content policy, but I don't wanna allow myself to just turn off these settings that let me bypass the content content policy. To do this, we're going to go back to the config editor and we're going to toggle on the option to enforce DNS settings. Once I download and install these restrictions on my device, you'll see that if I open up Safari and I go to a test page for the category that I blocked with my DNS content policy, that I get the block page for Tech Lockdown that says I can't access this website. What's really nice about this approach is that I didn't have to download an app on this phone, so I don't have to worry about an app crashing or not working properly. And what this setting did is it added protected DNS settings. So if I tried to go into settings and I found this section about DNS, I couldn't delete those DNS settings or override them with different ones to get around this content policy. So the last thing I want to demo is how would you prevent yourself from going into the VPN and device management section of your iPhone settings and just uninstalling the config that has all of your restrictions. I'm going to go back into the config editor and I'm going to enable removal protection. There are two options here to choose from. If you're self-managing your own restrictions, I suggest that you select the top option where you just prevent uninstall in general. And if you're a parent managing a child's device, you should enter in a pin that you know so that you could pick up the device and enter an uninstall pin if you absolutely needed to do that. Once you've enabled removal protection, you need to reinstall this config to apply that removal protection restriction. Since I used the prevent uninstall option, I no longer have a button that I can press that allows me to remove the profile. If you use the uninstall pin option, you would see the remove config button, but it would require you to enter this pin. Now, if you're an adult who's self-managing and you use that prevent uninstall option and you need to uninstall this config, you need to go back to the config editor and click the uninstall button. If your tech lockdown profile is locked, in order to continue with the uninstall process, you'll need to unlock your profile, which depending on the unlock steps you've set up, could be very tedious or require an accountability partner to provide you with a pin. Once it's unlocked, you'll be able to follow those uninstall instructions, which requires it to reinstall a config, and then the option to remove the config appears again within the settings app.